Close your eyes and think about a really healthy vegetarian recipe. How does it look like? Let me guess. Perhaps you uh, think about some uh, root vegetables that have been cooking way too long on the stove and lost all their color. Or this uh, dull green salad with cucumber and tomatoes. Or, you know, a standard uh, pasta dish with uh, tomato sauce. That's probably what most people think about when they, th when they uh, envision vegetarian, healthy vegetarian recipes. And that is what we are trying to change. In our eyes, a healthy vegetarian dish can look like this. And this. And this. <coughs> My name is uh, David. And uh, together we run the food blog Green Kitchen Stories. And that's what we're here to talk to you about today. Uh, we started the blog four years ago. Back then we, had, we were complete rookies. We had never written a single recipe, nor had we taken any photos of food. Uh, and we didn't know anything about blogging actually, we didn't read any blogs or uh, knew how to, how to blog. Uh, that was uh, four years ago. Today uh, we have somehow managed to create two best-selling apps, The Green Kitchen and Healthy Desserts. We have recently released our first uh, international cookbook. Um, it's called The Green Kitchen and in the US it's called Vegetarian Every Day. And uh, a few weeks back we also flew to Las Vegas and received this uh, very flattering blog award. Uh, I have no idea how this happened. <laughs> uh, but I'm really glad that it did. Um, so, at the end of this talk, we're going to do a small uh, cooking demonstration, like a cooking show. Uh, but uh, to start with, uh, we want to rewind uh, and tell you some, the story behind everything. Uh, it all started in uh, Rome, uh, six years ago. I lived there uh, and I was a vegetarian eating according to the Italian diet. I'm not sure if you know the Italian diet. It's pizza, pasta, pane and gelato. That's bread and ice cream. That was basically the, the, the only thing I ate. Yeah, and when we met in Italy, <coughs> I was eating the exact opposite. I was not a vegetarian and I didn't really eat pizza or pasta or bread. Um, so you can Maybe you can imagine that our first dinners was, were kind of awkward. Um, it, it worked fine when we were at restaurants, but when we cooked together, it was kind of like, oh, I'm not eating that. Totally different directions, totally. I was the meat and the vegetable, because it was all about the um, So after about a year, we moved to Stockholm. We've been living here for about five years. Um, and that we couldn't really keep on traveling in different directions. So we, um, we decided to find a new way of feeding. Um, I learned, uh, I, I, I was learning David about whole grains, um, about healthy fats, natural sweeteners, um, about substitution milk products to plant-based plant milk products. Um, 
And um, I was starting to experiment with totally plant-based dinners. And in the beginning, it was really difficult because I was used to thinking um, as the meat, as the center of the plate, and then just um, all kind of side dishes. And now I was trying to put the vegetables in the focus. Um, yeah, so we kind of developed this, uh, a lot of recipes with a, with a healthy twist, and uh, we, we wanted to share it, so we started the blog. And uh, some of the first recipes that we started making at home, right before the blog actually, uh, were muffins made on almond flour instead of uh, normal flour. And, uh, sweetened with the honey or bananas instead of uh, sugar. And uh, a lasagna made with uh, thinly sliced aubergine or zucchini that replaced the actual lasagna noodles, the pasta, in the dish. And uh, these banana pancakes that are completely flour free, they're only made out of egg, banana and coconut flour. I think actually it's a, one of the most popular recipes on the blog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody loves pancakes. <laughs> Everybody loves pancakes, yeah. And this beet bourguignon, not beef bourguignon, but beet bourguignon, that where beets and uh, portobello mushrooms actually replace the, all the beef and the meat in the recipe. Mm -hmm. So we had all these recipes just cooking, uh, you know, for ourselves. Uh, and. Uh, that's when we decided just to start the blog, Green Kitchen Stories, as a way of documenting our food endeavors and also <laughs> our failures, which we had a fair share of. It's really difficult to cook this way when you're not used to it. Uh, as you can see, and most people's first, uh, first impression is that the blog is really photo-centered. Uh, it's built around the photos. And um, so therefore, I wanted to talk to you a bit about food photography. I worked as an art director uh, for a food magazine, actually, uh, long before I got into this. Uh, but I learned to uh, be around. I, I saw so many food uh, photos and uh, learned a bit about uh, food styling. Uh, so I knew when we started the blog, I knew that we wanted the blog to be, and the photos to be every inch as good as the food photos in and, and the magazines. Uh, the problem was that I had never shot food, so I had no idea how this would be possible. Uh, and uh, luckily for me, my sister is a photographer. So I uh, started harassing her about like, how, which light food looks good in, which basically is natural light, just normal daylight. So you have to shoot close to a window if you want, like, an uh, easy tip. And, uh, well, how, and how the camera works. I mean, different, uh, uh, the different functions of a camera. So I started harassing her about that. And I also started taking loads and loads of food photos. And in the beginning, it looked uh, quite crappy. But, you know, the good thing with digital cameras is that they have endless amounts of images. So you can just shoot and shoot and shoot. And after 10,000 shots, you've probably improved. So the, one of the first uh, dishes that we did was this uh, <laughs> Indian lentil soup. And uh, as you can see, the light is completely off. It's like bulb uh, uh, light. And, uh, you know, the composition is uh, weird and the styling is pretty. Boring. Yeah, what were we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this one is from one of our later, uh, latest posts. And the light is better, the composition is cleaner, and the food styling is more interesting. Um, one trick that uh, we've learned throughout this journey is when you do, when you work with food photography, it's a simple trick to get it uh, look good, to good, look good is uh, to use quite graphical uh, compositions. And that one way of doing that is to shoot from above. So we shoot a lot from above uh, to get these clean, uh, uh, clean shots. And then you can be all messy in the dish. 
when, when you have a clean surrounding. Uh, we also try to reduce color on backgrounds and all the props that we use to let the food actually, and the food and the ingredients stand for the color and the focus and all the get all the attention. And we use like different backgrounds with di different textures, but all of them are quite neutral. So you can see like the, the red and the, and the green from the vegetables and fruit really pop out. Uh, and that's something we've learned. I, I've asked myself why why the photo part was so important to us and uh, uh, apart from just an interest it's been really something that has driven us in this process and I think the one answer is that because of the content that we have if you think about a sugary cake like a classic sugar cake you've already been won over. You already like it because it's uh, easily likable. But we use a few, quite a few weird ingredients, and it's all you know healthy and whole grains. Uh, so I think, therefore, we have to work twice as hard with the with the photos to to lurk you to try the recipes. Yeah, so as you might know, we work with a lot of different media. We, work, we wrote a book, which was a lot of fun. We, uh, we have the blog and we made some apps. Um, the, the blog universe has millions of opportunities, but it also has a few limitations. Um, two Swedish app developers contacted us and asked if they wanted to make the blog into an app, so just a simple cooking app. And um, the apps were kind of solving the internet problem that you can reach all recipes offline. So you always have the recipes in your pocket. You could bring it to the store or you can email the ingredients list to a friend. Um, this is the iPad version. Of our first app, The Green Kitchen. Um, yeah, and it's much easier to bring an iPad or, or an iPhone in the kitchen instead of bringing the computer. Uh, we work quite, quite close together with uh, uh, the app developers. They call it amazing applications. And actually, it's quite funny because it's two Swedish guys living in Stockholm. And since we wrote, write our blog in English, they email us in English, thought we were Americans or something. And it turned out that we actually live really close to each other on Southern Malm. <laughs> so, so they were like, let's have a Skype meeting. And we were like, um, can't we just meet at uh, Louis Louis or some <laughs> <laughs> cafe close by? And they were even vegetarians. And they were even oh, vegetarians, were both of them. Which is why they probably Red focus on us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so back then, <laughs> this, was, uh, this was only two years ago, and uh, the app the world is, you know, as you probably know, growing immensely. So back then, most recipe apps, actually, they were quite uh, boring. They were more like recipe databases, full of uh, information, but with uh, zero inspiration. So we knew from the beginning, and they were also really focused on making the app very photo-centered, just like our blog, actually, uh, and f as full of inspiration as possible. So the main idea with the app uh, and the layout of the app was to uh, create an app full of... Uh, uh, you, s you navigate in a grid mode only with photos, and then you... Uh, uh, have like full-size photos of the of the recipes, and you can swipe between the photos just to see see different photos or see, see different re recipes depending on which di direction you swipe, and then you just tap on like the the recipe mode when you're ready to start cooking, and you get everything all laid out. And this is actually much better than than the blog. Uh, when you when you need to cook, because you can strike out ingredients uh, or uh, steps steps when you're when you're done with them, and you can, like we said, you can email the ingredient list to your phone and so on. So it's uh, it's been really 
interesting working with this and learning about how, how uh, all the possibilities of the apps. And then we also did a healthy dessert app, which works in the same way, but with, only with uh, desserts. We wrote a book, Green Kitchen Stories, uh, or it's called The Green Kitchen. You can look at it in it if you want to. Um, we're not going to talk so much about the details in the book or, or the story behind it, but uh, we would like to show you a movie that we did when we launched it. Uh, we did it together with some friends who helped filming it and styling. Sweet black night, I won't apologize, cause I'm right, I'm no treasure, I'm not hidden. She's our daughter. She was too tired to <laughs> come today. <laughs> so I would like to explain to you why nutrition is such a big part of the blog and why it's so important for us to teach you about healthy food. Um, I have a bachelor in social study and for about seven years I was working in a healthcare system where we only treated people with two things. The first one was of course medicine and the next one was environmental <coughs> therapy. Um, we did not know anything whatsoever about the health benefits of a health, healthy lifestyle. We did not know the connection about food and how you feel. Um, so I'm currently studying to become a nutritional therapist um, to teach people uh, why it's so important to eat healthy food. Um, yeah, and um, as Hippocrates once said, let food be, th be thy medicine. So, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, a, few a few tricks to, for you to, to make at home that can increase your health really much is um, some cooking methods. The first one is soaking, and the next one is sprouting and fermentation. So um, you probably all taste fermentated food without knowing it. It's like uh, kimchi and sauerkraut. In It's very popular in Stockholm to drink kombucha. You can buy it almost everywhere. Um, and um, <clears throat> at home we use soaking a lot. So if you're eating a lot of whole grains, beans and lentils, nuts and seeds, um, you're probably really proud of yourself. And you should be, because it is really healthy. But it's also really hard for you to digest. So to um, remove the enzyme inhibitors and increase the nutritional value of these ingredients, um, 
you can soak them. You can just take an ingredient covered with water, soak it for about seven hours, um, and then you transform the same ingredients into a much more healthier product, which means that you will get more vitamins and more minerals from, from the same ingredient. Um, we, um, we brought you some food today. Uh, we, we wanted to teach you a really simple breakfast recipe. Um, it's an uh, orange and vanilla soaked oats. We just soaked it overnight in orange juice. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, let's start the cooking show. <laughs> so what you need for this recipe is uh, Havregrün oats, bananas, this is uh, shredded uh, coconut, orange juice, preferably freshly squeezed, but this is what we had. And uh, sunflower seeds. And also, do I have it somewhere here? Yeah. Uh, fresh uh, vanilla. So you take the oats and you put them in a glass or a large bowl. And then you cover it with uh, orange juice, water, or if you want to use any plant milk or milk, you can do that as well. So no cooking, only, you only pour it in there, and you put it in the fridge, go to bed, and the morning after when you wake up, you're all, you know how you are in the morning, you're all dizzy and confused, and uh, you just open the fridge, look inside, and then you have like this uh, great uh, quick breakfast. And uh, since we don't have a night here, and this is a cooking show, we have already prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we've prepared really big batches of this, so we're going to show you quickly how to just prepare like one glass and then you can all make this yourself, was our thought. So we're going to put everything up here and then you can, uh, if you want to try it, we have some yeah, we prepared a few, so glasses already done here. But you just can then you grab. can uh, just come and if you want to have more you can just uh, spoon up everything. Uh, so I'm going to just do one quickly, to, so you get the idea. You start with the sunflower seeds. Which we also soaked overnight. Yeah, forgot to say that. <laughs> then you add these. This is, I mean, this is exactly as a, the same consistency as a porridge, but it's never been cooked. It's only been soaked. So you take some porridge, sunflower seeds, some porridge. Some bananas, and coconut, and mint, and you're ready to go. So that's everything from us. Uh, please what come. Vanilla? What? What about the vanilla? Uh, the vanilla is uh, ah, I forgot the vanilla. <laughs> I'm bad at cooking shows, so you have to use, you do that. You you pour the vanilla. Uh, and mix them with the oats uh, the, the, the day before. So they soak with, uh, with everything else and everything got, gets this really nice vanilla flavor. Yeah. Is that everything? It's everything. All right. So, come so and get that's it for us. Please come forward and try everything and uh, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just follow me.